Okay, so let's begin. So let's begin with our topic for today. That is RESTful APIs. Yes, before. Understanding this particularly are RESTful APIs. It's important for us to understand this Node.js. What is Node.js? Let's understand. Basically, Node.js is one of the framework of JavaScript. Okay. It's one of the most trending framework in JavaScript. Right now, for a backend in JavaScript, we use Node.js. And it's not about the Node.js as a one, uh, say, uh, framework. But I'll tell you one thing right now in the market, it's in very, very, very high demand. Why so? Because of the two stack which is popular in market called Mern stack and the mean stack. Mern stack refers Mongo Express React node and mean stack refers Mongo Express Angular node. Because of this two main stack which is quite trending in market, Node.js become the top trending technology right now. In short, I can say that if you're a fresher or a experience and looking for a change, learning a Node.js is anyways a very much added to your curriculum or say your resume. So adding a Node.js is always, always a best option if you talk to me about the current market trend. Now, why exactly Node.js is popular? Okay, I'll give you two scenarios, guys. Okay, you understand that which one is better one. Let's take one example. There are two ways to deal the customer. The first way to deal the customer is that I'll say in the way like an ATM that the how the ATM machines deal with the customer. How they do? Basically, in that case, we go to the ATM. Okay, we're standing in the queue of the ATM. Now, suppose while standing in the queue of ATM, there are already a few people before you in that queue. So in that case, what happened? You have to stand in a queue and wait for the other person to complete their request. And whenever they have completed their request, so ultimately what they do is, then your turn will come. And on the other side, you cannot go out of the queue. Why? Because ultimately, if we go out of the queue, someone else and take my position. In very short words, we can say that we have to stand in a queue and wait for request to get complete. Correct. That's the one approach. Second approach in dealing the customer is that like a Domino's deal with customers. Now, how exactly Domino's deal with customer? You go to the counter. In that counter, Domino's uh, people will give a token number and they say whenever the token number is uh, say completed. Okay. Whenever the token number, your token number start appearing, come and collect your pizza. In that case, what happened? You are completely free. You got the token number. Now you are free. You can go anywhere. Why? Because in that case, you're not bind in terms of like to stay and wait for your turn. In this case, I can serve multiple people together at one place and without impacting the performance. Why? Because when I take your order, after taking your order, I place that order in the back end. Now, in the back end, many people are baking that pizza. Correct. So, ultimately, for you, it's not be a trouble. Why? For you, it's like that you place the order, and after that, you are waiting for it to get complete. And whenever it complete, you get a response from there. So, guys, that's basically one other model. So, obviously, which one is a better model? Handling a user as an ATM or handling the Domino's is doing. Domino's. Why? Because in this, customers also satisfied, satisfied that okay, there's something is happening for them. On the other side, it takes less time for the processing. Now, very similar way, guys. Consider that Domino's as an example of Node.js and your ATM as a Java. You can think yourself which one is better. So ultimately, obviously, when Domino's is better, so ultimately, in the other say, other sense, your Node.js is better because Node.js work on that principle. 
there are three words that explain about the node js guys let me tell you so let me open our one text editor so three words that summarize a detail about the node js let's see that single thread non blocking async input output single thread basically what it do is guys all the requests that you do is taken over the single thread all the requests that you do is taken over the single thread first of all it processed in a async manner async means that multiple requests can process at one single point of time because they don't block they don't wait ask someone to wait so they keep on going so it's more or less like that without waiting for one thing to get complete it processing that request then non blocking because they are not blocking async because multiple parallel requests are keep on processing at same point of time guys so these are few reason that why node js is popular apart from that it's a powerful javascript framework developed over the chrome v8 engine compile the code directly into native machine basically what happen no in lot of term if i say uh, your uh, other language what they do first of all they convert the code into byte code okay they convert the code into byte code and then from byte code they convert the thing into the machine code whereas it work bit differently it directly convert the code into the machine code that it can be directly be accessible by the compiler so obviously it happen in the way that when somebody is able to access that through a compiler so it become easy for them to process that request so obviously one level of conversion is removed and when one level of conversion removed so obviously the processing of that particular thing become faster guys so that is why your node js is a preferred way right now in market to process the request on the other side use for creating server side web applications basically it's a one of the best place to the back end like it is very similar to uh, like the way it work like your python or java work whereas some people compare angular with node js react with node js guys there no comparison between angular and the node js why because angular is a front end and node is a back end so ultimately no connection or say your comparison between the node js and the react or angular and apart from this it's a right pick for a data intensive real time applications wherever the multiple requests like instagram uber your uber is also using right now so ultimately uber is particularly using your node js also guys why because wherever it come to processing a multiple request at one point of time we have to go through the node js as a language what are feature it's open source guys when any language is open source no it's always beneficial for that case why because anything which is open source is particularly good to use simple and fast because a lot of people contribute in development and the process become let's say development become faster for open sources it's async highly scalable single thread no buffering and cross platform it can be used for any platform now as i already explained the architecture that is a traditional architecture what happen is one by one each request get processed whereas node js work differently node js process all the request at one point of time it take all the request at once and keep processing them parallelly one after the other whatever request got complete we get the response of that guys basically what happened this case one more thing whatever the request got complete suppose 10 people are requesting something no it i did not wait for all the 10 requests whatever request got keep on completing it keep on responding in very similar way you order for a cheese bus i order for a cold drink obviously cold drink can be served faster than the cheese bus so obviously they will serve me the cold drink first and they will not say somebody order cheese bus before you so guys this is how exactly your node js architecture work i hope till now it's clear to all guys what is node js thread means multiple request process at one point of time that's called thread thread means if you requesting or one thing 
one request at one place one request at one place now guys the next thing that come up is your what is rest api guys the trend of building the rest api everywhere what do my rest api basically rest api is actually refer as your urls basically it's nothing more than a url whenever anybody want a data what they will do is they will hit the url and they will get a data in response so what exactly it mean as for every single thing and everywhere right now in a market everybody use your uh, say rest apis whatever platform they are using the benefit the benefit of using a rest api is that it's like a url okay it's nothing more like a url when anybody hit that url they get the response full form is representational state transform is like that whoever will request everybody is going to get a same response now whatever request is coming they try everybody suppose you are requesting from mobile phone and ultimately uh, your desktop or anywhere so wherever you will go so everybody use a rest api okay i'll show how exactly rest api look like now feature of restful apis it's simpler than a soap earlier days we the soap apis which is quite heavy to run or quite heavy to create now it's simpler than the soap next thing that is support json and xml mainly support json and xml and apart from that if i talk about documentation is good error messenger good it's quite easy to handle this rest apis as compared to your other apis apart from that what are principle of rest apis basically guys the principle of rest apis say it's stateless stateless means it don't maintain the state what does it mean it mean that if you are requesting or i am requesting something all of us will get the same data and not say it save some record on the basis of that it give the output not like that all of us will get the same response guys is client server based model and its uniform interface as I said that anybody request for that everyone is going to get the same response that's called uniform interface now let me hit any api show sure exactly they look like allow me just one second i'll show you guys how exactly the rest api url look like it's like a url and whenever whenever anybody hit that url they will get the same data so that one url say slash restaurants see guys we got the data and to see in a more better way now in the chrome always add one extension that is called json viewer json viewer is an extension guys the data that you are getting from the api you will get that in the better mode so let me show you we simply say json viewer chrome extension like this simply go and add that to chrome now i'll show the difference okay now see guys when i hit this url see this is the data that we were expecting see and that's how this is a rest api now if i need this data i hit from a mobile phone i hit from a desktop i hit from a laptop anywhere i'll hit i will get the same data and if i give this url to you guys also you guys are also going to get the same data guys that's what the rest api in this we have method like get post put delete to get the data we to like this is a get request to insert the data we use post then 
for updating the data we use put and to remove the data we use delete this when will the rest api will be useful whatever website you are using currently know everywhere you are using a rest api what is server side client side then the things you interact with the screen the display part is like a client side and the backend processing of that is a server side now i'll show you how to build that api okay so let's start creating that so let's make the one sample code for that case i'll make one folder say rest api now guys for creating that rest api you need to have some packages installed with you so i have to do one thing right now in my laptop i cannot directly install that package so basically we are going to use something called as express here guys for creating a node api we have to use something called as express so basically express is a one of the framework that we use for node js okay so i'm going to use the express so i'll show you what exactly it is i'll open one my new window i'll open this folder called rest apis over this folder you will see i have one package.json this package.json is containing guys what all package i'm going to use i'm going to mainly use one package called express one package called mongodb okay while creating the api i'm going to use a mongodb as my package we'll make a one file by the name of app.js server.js whatever name you want to give i'll give the name as app.js now the very first thing is whatever package you are using you guys you have to require that package we call import that package we do like this we'll say var express equal to require express basically what i'm doing is i'm requiring a package by the name of express so express is one of the package or a framework which is available in node.js and maximum places you will see this spec package for making the apis guys now we have to make an object of that we do like this where app equal to express why we do that because we have the method from there so we use where app equal to express then after that we define the port number over which is application run we'll say where port equal to suppose 9800 any port number you can give and then you have to make your application to listen to the port number guys how will do we'll say app dot listen to the port number and then we had this function this function is called callback function why because this function is waiting for request to get complete whenever the request got complete this function will fire we call them as a callback function right now I take only one parameter say error in case of error if you got an error while running it will throw me the error else we write console dot log and we write server is running on port 9800 first of all we are going to define the get route how we write app dot get okay then in this we write dot simple slash and i say it take two parameter one is request one is response arrow curly bracket and we write response dot send hi from node.js it's very simple api route generated your api route got generated already you created one server 
running on the port number 9800 and then after that you have defined one route call slash route whenever anybody go to localhost 9800 they will say hi from node.js now let me show you how it run it so in package.json we write a start command guys and the start command we have mentioned this node app.js go to the folder so node.js must be installed in a system to run the application desktop and i type node npm start simple it's a 9800 just go to browser and type localhost 9800 see guys you got higher from node.js suppose you have one route for restaurant one route for your home how you do i'll make one more route say about hi to i say about page now stop this start it there's a forever call node moon also now if somebody go to localhost it see like that when somebody go to slash about they will see hi from about page so ultimately guys this is the way you start defining your routes and this is how we define the route in the node.js so in this we require our package we define the port number we make our application to listen to the port number and we define the routes there now next thing is i'll show you that i have a mongodb running okay on my server let's see mongo is a database i'll just show dbs i have one database called restaurant so show collections uh, now we'll say db dot restaurant dot find now basically guys i have some data which is in my database now i'll show you how to make a proper api get api with this database for doing that what i'll do is i'll first of all make a connection to my mongodb i'll require that package mongodb we'll say var mongo equal to require mongodb then we write var mongo client any name equal to mongo dot mongo client like this so i've required that mongodb guys now the mo it can be any database the default port over which mongodb run is 27017 let's see that where it const mongo url is mongodb call and double backslash localhost 27017 that's my port number we'll write const db database name and const collection name so my collection name means guys table name in this case my collection name is restaurant now we have to make a connection with mongodb you have to call that how we'll do when you create a server you write like this now mongo client dot connect in this we'll give mongo url and either we get the error either we get the client arrow curly braces if we got any error we'll say console.log or throw error while connecting else we'll say db equal to client client dot db and database name and guys my database name is restaurants that's my database name okay then inside that will make this server to listen now what exactly we did we have made the database connection this is a url this is a package and this is a way to connect 
once it is connected to database now i'll make a call and get the data how so in the response dot get will write db dot collection collection name your collection name is restaurant the query is dot find find the data you will get guys it's an array array now either you get the error either you get the result arrow if you got error then simply write throw error else well say response dot send result so guys we connect with the database and we try to get the output let's just see i'll start my server missing in a const declaration somewhere okay just say here let now just try see guys now this and this no difference this is we just created this one get api and this is how it was a real api see exactly we are able to replicate our real api that's how we're done i hope you liked it thank you bye bye